Recently, I refurbished an old Acer Aspire laptop, this one right here. Now I got the laptop for free and it has an Intel third generation i5 with six gigabytes of memory and I threw in a 250 gigabyte SSD into it. So not a lot of real work can be done on this thing. And I could turn around and sell this laptop to another tech enthusiast, but instead I'm gonna use it to block ads across the internet on all of my devices and I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing with an old laptop that I know you have laying around your house that you also never use. But before we get into that, let's talk about Morning Brew. Now, I'm not a coffee drinker myself, so I get my fix with Morning Brew, which actually isn't coffee at all. Morning Brew is a free new subscription sent straight to your email every day, giving you the rundown on the highlights in business and tech and politics. It's really great and all you have to do is enter in your email address so it's really low risk and you can unsub at any time. Now I've been using Morning Brew myself for quite some time and I actually love it. In fact, they aren't even paying me to say any of this. I just really like them a lot and if I can get 25 of you to sign up, they will give me a free t-shirt and I really want a free t-shirt. So if you're into that kind of thing, please consider subscribing using the link in the description below. Okay, thank you so much. Let's go back and move on with the project. All right, so for this project, we're gonna be using a program called PiHole. And this is a really popular program for the single board computer called Raspberry Pi. But you can make it work on pretty much any computer out there, probably even an old phone, if you really wanted to. And the way it works is by utilizing what is known as a forwarding DNS, which is really cool. Basically, right now, when you go into a browser like Chrome or Safari and you type in a website, your computer sends a request to what is called a DNS or domain name server. And that DNS is connected with a bunch of different websites and it will look the website up that you requested and send back all of the website information back to your computer. That's how that works. What a forwarding DNS does is it inserts a middleman. Now, it's a little more technical than this, but basically, instead of requesting the website from the main DNS directly, you tell your forwarding to DNS or your forwarding DNS to go get that website for you, and on the way back, the forwarding DNS checks for ads on the website and stops those from making it to your computer. It's kind of like how when you go to get chicken from the store, they've already removed the skin and bones, only like totally different and nothing like that at all. Now, when you set up a pie hole on a computer, that computer becomes your forwarding DNS, and you can tell your Wi-Fi to use that computer instead of other DNSs to look up websites. So to get started with your project, you're gonna need an old laptop that you don't care about. I'm gonna be using this one. And you're also gonna want a blank USB drive that is at least eight gigabytes in size. And we'll actually start off on our main computer to kick things off, but just make sure that this USB drive doesn't have anything that you want on it. All right, so step one is to download Belina Etcher and Ubuntu. Now, the operating system that we're gonna be using for this project is called Ubuntu, which is based on Linux. And odds are that this old laptop that you have lying around is currently running a Mac or Windows operating system. So we're gonna to need to get Ubuntu installed on that instead of Mac or Windows. And the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do to do that is download a program called Belina Etcher. Now, this program is super cool. It turns USB drive drives into system operating system installation devices. And to download it, you just go to belina.io forward slash slash etcher and click on the download button. Then just follow the installation steps, which for Mac is literally just dragging the app into the apps folder. And then what we're going to do after that is download the most recent version of Ubuntu, which you can actually just get from ubuntu.com. Now, at the time of this recording, the latest long-term support or LTS version of Ubuntu is 20.04.3. And you're gonna to wanna to get the most recent LTS version for yourself. From here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna insert your USB drive into your main computer, open up Belina Etcher, and then select the Ubuntu ISO that you just downloaded, then select your USB drive and click flash. Now, like I said below before, this is going to erase everything on your USB drive. So just make sure that you're using a USB drive that you don't care about getting wiped. Now, once your USB drive is flashed, it's time to take it out and plug it in to that old laptop for step two, which is installing and updating Ubuntu. 
So now that you have Ubuntu flashed, it's time to install it on the old laptop. You just stick that USB drive into one of the ports and hit the on button for your laptop. Now, immediately you're gonna wanna start hitting F2 or delete. This will take you into what's called the laptop's BIOS. From there, you'll navigate over to the boot menu and make sure that you're booting from the USB drive. Then save and exit. Then you're gonna to wanna to select install Ubuntu from the menu that's on the following screen and follow the directions for a minimal install. And I'll show you what that looks like here in just a bit. All right, guys, so you're just gonna to wanna to follow these first two steps, make sure you log into your Wi-Fi. So pretty simple there. And then on this next screen, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you select minimal installation instead of normal installation. And on the following screen, you're going to want to erase the disk and install Ubuntu instead of install alongside. Other than that, everything else is pretty self-explanatory. It'll walk you through. You pick your region and you name your computer, select a password, things like that. And then you just wait for everything to install. Pretty simple. Now that we're logged into the desktop, we're going to want to start doing some really nerdy things with the command line, but don't worry. I promise that you won't break anything by typing this code into your computer. And even if you do, you can always just reboot and reinstall Ubuntu. But honestly, I really don't think you're going to mess this up and your computer is going to be just fine. Now, again, once you're logged into the desktop, you're going to press Control Alt T to open up the terminal. This is where the nerdy stuff comes in. And you're going to type the following commands on screen. Type in your password that you set when setting up Ubuntu and then type the following command once everything is run. Now these commands will make sure that your system is up to date and ready to install Pi-hole. All right, step number three is installing Pi-hole. To do that, we first need to install a program called curl. To do that, we'll type the following command into the terminal. Now you're gonna to wanna to type Y to continue installing, and once that's done, we'll install PyHole by typing the following command. Type Y to continue installing, and it will automatically run PyHole for you. Follow the install instructions, and be sure to take a picture of the static IP address, because that's going to come in handy later. Step four is finishing up with the PyHole and the old laptop. Now that you have Pi hole installed, we'll want to do two more things on this laptop before we can close it down and leave it in the room that we dug it out of um, for the rest of time and go back to our main computer. So the first thing that we're going to want to do on this old laptop to finish things up is you're probably going to want to change the password for Pi hole, which you can do by running the following command. Now type a new super secret password, something really fancy like cookies, and then type it again to just confirm that that is in fact the new password that you want. Next, we wanna make sure that when we close the laptop lid of the laptop, right, that it doesn't go to sleep. To do that, we're gonna to need to type the following command. Type your password if necessary, and it will open the nano page. Scroll down until you see the following forward or hashtag handle lid switch equals suspend. Now you're going to want to erase that hashtag and type ignore where suspend is. So it'll say handle uh, lid switch equals ignore. Then press control X to exit, Y to save and enter to go back to the main prompt. Now, when you close your laptop, your screen will still go dark, but it won't go into hibernation and log you out. So the pie hole stops working. Now, if all of that command line stuff made you feel a little nerdy, I would love a sub from you on the channel. Um, we talk about other things that make you feel nerdy. So if you enjoyed that, I'd love a sub. All right, step five is to go back to your main computer and configure your Wi-Fi slash router settings and your Pi-hole admin. 
All right, so now we log back into our main computer and open up a browser um, window. Now, any browser is going to be fine, Safari, Chrome, Firefox, whatever you want to do. But instead of typing a website, you're going to want to type your router's IP address. Now, if you look on your router, it should tell you what it is. And it's really common for that to be 192.168.1.1. Now, you'll put in the username and password for your router that you probably forgot because you haven't used it since you set up your Wi-Fi initially. But you're going to need that to do whatever is necessary to recover that login info and log into your router admin page. Once you're logged in, you'll need to find your DNS settings. Mine are under Advanced, Setup, and then Internet Setup. You'll want to use a static DNS and type in your Pi-hole IP address under the primary DNS. Then save those settings. From there, you're actually done. The pie hole should start working soon. Sometimes it takes a few tries for things to work their way through the system and get to your device, but it should start working pretty soon. However, to see what's working and how things are working and what's going on, you can actually do that from any computer on your network by typing in your pie holes IP address into the browser bar or browser window and then entering the password. That will bring up the dashboard where you can further configure things, whitelist and blacklist certain URLs and do other things with your pie hole. And that's it. Most websites will now have their ads start to be blocked. Now it's not perfect. Some ads don't get blocked and some ads do, but it's pretty nice to not have to watch ads on YouTube. You know, maybe one day this will bite me in the butt. I'll be monetized, I'll run ads on my channel, and I'll get fewer views because I made a video like this. But it's really nice to not have to deal with ads online. If you found this video helpful, useful, or entertaining, I would love it if you hit that like button and sub to the channel. All of that really helps. I'm a small channel, I'm growing. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comment below, and we will see you in the next video.